So I watched your your application before we started just to, you know, get familiar again. And I remember you said something that you are not in college and you're doing something with firefighting. Is that right? That is correct. So I'm just I'm curious because I think so many people who watch my videos are thinking that college is the only path. And I just wanted to start off by asking you, like, what led you to doing that? Well, it's a long story, but I'll shorten it. Um, so I was originally planning on doing the full college thing, getting a degree, blah, blah, blah. Some stuff happened in life and I ended up moving, which kind of messed up my college timing. Like it ruined the, the credits and degree that I was going for. So I had to switch. And then the place I moved, the prominent college there, way too expensive. Yeah. So currently it's not even an option. So I ended up looking for other stuff. And the firefighting thing is not just like a random. I was a volunteer before I moved for two, two-ish years at a fire department, my local. I sent in my application, but their hiring process starts in December. So that's the goal for now. So you'll become a full-time firefighter? Um, yeah, if everything goes correct, which it should, looking like it, um, it will be a career. So awesome. no more worrying about it. So what I'm curious about is, did you pick firefighting because of the cost or was, or when you were considering college, was there something that you really wanted to study, but it was just too expensive out of the question? Um, actually, it's a funny story with firefighting. I didn't, I mean, I picked it, but I didn't really decide to start it. I don't know. I was 16, 17 at the time. And my dad, he was a firefighter volunteer for like 20 years. So he knows his stuff. Um, and he, we had just moved to a different place and he was like, why don't you join the fire department? And I was like, ha ha. And then I thought about it for like a couple days because they had like, um, junior firefighters, which was, you couldn't really do anything, but you, you learn the stuff, you get the knowledge before actually doing anything. It was like mid July. I was like, I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> so I might as well. So I went over there, got an application and then it worked out. I was there for a couple of years before I moved. It was pretty fun. And so now that you're doing that or, or soon to be doing that, do you feel as though that was the correct choice for you? Like you don't regret not doing college? I think if I hadn't done that, I think my life would be very different currently, along with, you know, making some friends there and learning a lot of cool stuff, just kind of opening the worldview a little bit with that kind of thing. I also wouldn't have an option right now if i hadn't done that so my life would be very different i would probably be in a lot more debt because i would need to take out some kind of loan to go to college i wouldn't really have an option yeah because so many people they look at college where if i don't go to college then there's nothing else for me to do but evidently there are other things and i know that someone else that's going to be on a call wants to be an electrician uh, trade school is a thing and i just I just wonder where that comes from, because I didn't know anyone really that went into firefighting specifically. And like, do you think that it was hard to find firefighting if you didn't have your dad as the, you know, 20 year veteran model? Like, hey, you should join the firefighting force. Like, it's not really pushed on students, is it? I would definitely agree. It's it's not one of those things where nobody knows about. It. Everyone knows about it. Yeah. Nobody thinks they can do it. I think that's the problem. Everyone looks at it and they think about like, like FDNY, which I, I used to live in New York. So that was kind of like, oh, fire department, oh, FDNY. Oh, okay. But like, yeah. that's like one of the biggest, you know, most active fire departments probably in the world, not not only the country. Most most people have some, you know, small local department that might not even have a career option, might just be volunteer like where I was. Most people don't even realize a lot of the times they'll pay for your your credits, your courses. Sometimes if you want to go to college, it'll even count towards a college credit if you do the course and you get the cert. Oh, wow. It's, Interesting. Yeah. It's not just like a, oh, you go in and they, they show you how to, you know, handle a fire hose. Like right. it's, it's, it's legit. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of certifications you can get a lot of life skills and a lot of people like all different kinds. There was construction, there was a electrician, there was plumbing, there was a bunch of guys there, knew a bunch of stuff, you learn little stuff from them. It's it's very interesting. People don't know about it, really. So so would you do that then? Would you consider going back to college? Or do you think it's just not even worth your time? Like if the fire department could pay for it? Um, currently, I would 
I would probably not. I would probably choose to just pursue fire department stuff, you know, get as many certifications as I can. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of really nail down everything I need to nail down for that. But I do have a kind of little part of me that, you know, in a couple of years, if it's going good, I might, you know, finish out my degree. I have like two years into it, so it wouldn't oh, be too hard, but it's not something I'm super concerned about right now. What were you studying? Well, originally I was studying history and then I realized you're not going to get a job really with history. Yeah. Um, so I switched to psychology because those were both of my pretty big interests. I was super interested in both of those. And then psychology, I realized you have to pretty much get a doctorate to do anything. Yeah, so, to, to practice, right? Yeah, realistically, I mean, if you don't get a doctorate, you can maybe be like an assistant, but you can't get any real jobs with that. And then I figured, okay, I'm not going to do that. That's too much money. That's too much time, realistically. Um, so I switched to business and that was right before, and that was right before all the, the cost came in. So that's just sitting there now. So where do you see yourself now? as you sit on the fire department track, is that what you see your career turning into? That's what I hope for. I've applied to this place and I didn't get in, but that was personal. That was like a, I couldn't get through it. Now I'm, I have no doubts about it. It's going to be easy, easier at least, because I know what to deal with. I've been hitting the gym quite a lot. So I think mentally and physically, I'm much more prepared this time. And the only issue would be if someone else with like, you know, 15 years of experience also applied and they got in. That right. would realistically be the only reason that I wouldn't. Yeah. But I also know the guys there. They're pretty nice. I think they like me. So <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, because that's another thing about um the fire department. And I think so many people are missing in their career is that there's just an intrinsic like brotherhood, right? And you just know, have like a big group of guys. And like with me, I work from home. And being a creator, you know, you're often working by yourself. You don't have a circle of people like that must be such an enticing factor, right? To know that you have a bunch of friends around. That definitely is like a huge part of it. That's initially like when I was a teenager, what kind of really got me into it was that since we had just moved, I didn't have a ton of friends. And that was kind of like, oh, here's just a group of people like, yeah, okay. Most of them were grown adults, but there was a couple of teenagers that actually went to the same high school as me at the time. It was, it is definitely like, it's a community and you know, you hear it. I heard it before, right? Oh, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a family and it's like, ugh. but it is like, if yeah. you're there for long enough, it really is like just anything. And most of them are nice. It's a, I think that's a misconception that, oh, they're all old and like weird, you know, stuck in their ways. I mean, some of them, but generally they're, they're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. Right. So, so what do you do? on a day-to-day -day basis as a firefighter? Because I don't honest, honestly know how it works. I would say it depends, obviously, what kind of department you're in. Where I was a volunteer, there wasn't really a day-to-day. -day. There was like a weekly training meetup type thing. There was definitely those people who made every single call because they were just like, that was kind of their their life almost, which isn't a bad thing. It's not a great thing, but yeah, you know, some people just don't have much else to do, so that's fine. Um, Career-wise, though, which is hopefully where I'll be going. Um, it depends on the shift. Sometimes there's 48 on, uh, 96 off. Sometimes there's 24, 48. It depends on the place. Is that hours? Uh, yeah. So it would be, I think the one that I'm going to is, uh, so it's two days on, four days off. So you get 48 hours and you just, you live in the firehouse for two days and then you get four days to do whatever you want. As long as you're there by the time the next shift starts, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, day to day, I mean, other than if you get a call training, doing work around the house, making sure all your gear and equipment is in order. It's nothing too crazy, honestly. Here's something that I would like to ask you about. Actually, I remember watching videos on YouTube from various outlets where they were going with a fire crew out in California or Idaho fighting wildfires, right? Mm -hmm. And they're doing work like cutting down trees and controlling the, the direction of the fire and all that. And they talk about how so many people, so many young people do not want to go into the fire force because it's not paid well enough or the work is extremely demanding, like working 80 hours a week. And obviously that's a regional thing. I'm sure fighting wildfires is far more difficult than, you know, just an occasional call or whatever. But do you have any perspective on on the youth in the fire force or like a lot of young people trying to get into it or is that actually true it's it's not very enticing for this generation 
I would definitely say, like you said, it definitely depends on the region. Some places pay not very much for way too much. Some places pay insane amounts of money. I know certain places in the Midwest with wildfire pay upwards of like 80k a year oh, really like starting it, it definitely depends where you live like you're not going to get that in a, in a little town but right. if you go to certain places in certain states you can definitely find those jobs somewhere um as far as like young people i would say generally it's probably not you know you're not going to get a lot of 18 19 year olds um I mean, I know a couple that were like a couple teenagers that started as teenagers and now are still in it as an adult. But I would say it's definitely not common for that to happen. Yeah, because the videos that I was watching, they were talking about very dangerous, very hot, working for a week straight or whatever, 12 hours a day, and they make like 20 bucks an hour or something. It's like, that's not that much for what you're being asked to do. And I just, I can just see like a 20 year old man being like, well, I could do this, but I could also just do a job that's a lot safer, that pays better. So it's like, why would I do this? You know, like, I think people have this perception that firefighters make absolutely nothing. And I mean, I don't think it's like incredibly lucrative, but it's still like, it could be a good career, right? Yeah, it, it definitely depends on experience, rank, certifications, all that stuff adds up. So let's say I think my department that I'm going to starts at around maybe 35K a year, which, you know, that's not a ton of money, but that's yeah. money for me. I'm 20, so that's that's pretty good for a starting point. Right. Um, but, you know, every certification you get, it's like five, five, three, four percent raise. So if I get, you know, four or five more certifications, that's what, 50K? Like, that's in a couple of years, that's not really a lot. Like, that's not a lot of time for that much raise. That's pretty good compared to most jobs. Yeah. No, dude, last year I got a raise of like 1.5%. It was a joke. Yeah, like, most places will not give you that much, especially since this is up to you. Like you can get as many as you want as long as you do the certification and do the work. So right. it's not even up to them. It's literally just whatever you can do, they will pay for it. And they pay for everything. Well, it sounds like you've got everything pretty figured out then. Is it like, I think a lot of people who watch my videos are like, oh, I don't know what I want to do with my life, but it sounds like you got a pretty good plan. I would say if it works out, definitely. And, and you'll find out if it works out in December, basically. Uh, Yeah, December is when they start testing, but the testing isn't a problem. I've done it. It's For me, it's going to be easy, but the problem is, or not the problem, the, the dependent is obviously if someone else comes in with significantly more experience, that'll suck. But other than that, yeah, it's a done deal pretty much. Well, even so, could you not just go to a different department? I could, but the thing with that is that a lot of the departments are pretty, I wouldn't say corporate, but it's like if they're big departments, it's going to be like company more than a department. Like, okay, here's your thing. You're a number. You're not like a person, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. This department, it's small. It doesn't pay much, but I actually really like the guys. I really like the department. It's close. So I could go to another department, but I, I would like to go to this one. Right. That makes sense. I know. I think you said it in a video, um, but like, how did you figure out that like people would sit there and watch like 20, 30 minutes of you just like talking about stuff? Well, I didn't. I, I 100% uh, was surprised when everything started taking off. Um, I think what it comes down to is that there's certainly a, a popular style of video now on YouTube. People talked about the Mr. Beastification of YouTube and everyone's thumbnails and titles look the same and they all talk in the same way and all that. And I really did not want to like feed into that. I didn't want to do like the shocked wow face in my thumbnails and just be like everyone else. And I felt like there was a certain a certain area that was missing on YouTube where people aren't really like talking as much. They're just kind of making stuff for entertainment or content. And there wasn't that much like genuine talk going on. And there was there, there are other channels like the Weekly Slap. Everyone everyone knows Slat. Mm -hmm. And everyone or less people, but I'm sure a lot of people by now know uh Dry Creek Wrangler School with Dwayne. And he's like a kind of like a fifty year old cowboy that talks about life. But I was always thinking with the weekly slap specifically, I'm like, man, he doesn't upload enough. You know, someone needs to fill this gap in the market, you know. And so I was like, maybe I'll just write out some ideas for talking videos in a, in a notepad, or whatever, and just think about examples from my life. And initially and I think this is really important for anyone who wants to become a creator is getting over imposter syndrome and recognizing that even if you're young and you feel like you have nothing to say, you probably do. And so I'm like, well, why on earth would anyone listen to me? I have just started my life. I have no experience at all. But then as each video gets uploaded, 
and I'm thinking of ideas in the comments, and I think about that one embarrassing story or whatever, I'm like, oh, age is just a number. And I actually do have experience that's worth sharing, and people might get some value out of it. And so I just keep feeding the treadmill of ideas. And I haven't done a talking video in a little bit, but I would just think of one after another and after another. And now what we're doing here is a really good opportunity for the future of the channel, where it's no longer just me, because there's certainly a wall that I would hit where because it's just my thoughts and because it's just me typing out these scripts and bullet points, I kind of run out of steam and I need someone else to bounce ideas off of. Like if I had to sit down and write out a 20 minute talking video, that would be really difficult. But when you have someone else here and someone else to bounce an idea off of, it really becomes like a flow, you know, no pun intended. And so now as I arrive at this idea with the channel, this I think is a, it's not really something that anyone else is doing. I mean, there's a couple people, there's Healthy Gamer GG, you might know of uh, Dr. K just brings on viewers sometimes and they talk about their problems or whatever. And I want to see more of that on YouTube. I want to see people engaging with their audience and and not, not just for the sake of engaging with their audience, but talking about things that would not normally be discussed, like what do I do with my life? Should I go to college? Should I pursue a trade? Should I pursue firefighting? You know, stuff like that, because people don't really think about it. And I'm, I think most people just have one idea because they only have their one perspective. But when you talk to someone else and maybe... Eventually, I'll start doing like group calls and have like five people, 10 people. Then you really get into like, this is a great forum for talking about life. So that was kind of a roundabout answer, but that's basically why I do what I do. Well, that makes sense, though. I mean, I think it's a great idea. Like, I was very excited that I saw that video because it was so early. Like, it was like an hour or two yeah. old. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> this sounds exciting. And I think it would definitely be, especially with like the way your channel is set up, I think it'll be very interesting to watch whatever you decide to post with the people that you talk with. I definitely look forward to that. I would imagine like it's exciting, especially if they have been watching you. Like I've only been watching you for a couple months, like I said, but I really enjoyed the videos. So seeing something where it's like interacting with people that want to interact. Yeah, that's I think that's very like enticing when it's like, ooh, I get a chance to be a part of this thing that I really enjoy. Right. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, and who knows? I mean, once you get your, uh, you know, hopefully, once you get your job in December, maybe you can come back on and we can reconnect. I would love to. I was honestly, I was thinking about that, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> you can come back. You can come back. Yeah, I, I feel like that was kind of like egotistical. Like, oh yeah, you should have me back. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> no, I'd love. But to. I would love to. Maybe then, if anyone has any interest, I could answer some questions because I feel like I don't know. I feel like that's an interesting, not super talked about part of society, like. Yeah. emergency service stuff i thank you again for coming on and thank you so much for having me this is a pleasure sure man all right i'll catch you later all right see ya